Okay. Yeah. Sorry ya, my direction very salah. Every two rows, this one feels that way, that one feels that way. You know what to do lah, you're very smart lah. Okay, every two rows. Uh, talk to the person. If you have one person against you, say, Hi, my name is so-and-so, my name is so-and-so. And what is your favorite place to go to? You can also ask them, uh, do you think Serena is an idiot? Yeah. And once that is done, ladies and gentlemen, uh, congratulations. You can give yourselves a big round of applause. You just knew, gotten to know your friend or uh, the people who are attending Big A 2019 a little better. Thank you so much for me taking your seats. Now, as I introduce you to the next speaker, our next speaker promises to make her speech sexy. That is up to you to gauge, okay? Remember, please use the app and ask her if she's sexy. Well, she's definitely sexy. Um, uh, Dr. Esther Liu has more than 10 years, 10 years of technical experience on optoelectronic, correct, right? Okay. Good. Um, quality control, QC, failure analysis, and high volume engineering data analysis, people analytics, and AI. So you can an analyze me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She just analyzed me just now. <clears throat> ah, she managed and <laughs> she manages and lead national and global data architecture projects for government and MNC companies. And she's also involved in government related projects, task force, policies and guidelines uh, to further expand digital transformation in the country. Did I miss out on anything? That, oh yes, she's from UEM Magenta Berhad. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Esther Liu, Head of Digital Advocate and Knowledge Management. What's, what's the box for? Wouldn't you like to know? Oh, we're going to find out what's in the box. Okay, forgive me, but I like to dance on stage. Whew. Because data science is sexy and you need someone to wake you up. Right, uh, how do I use this? Where's the next? Oh, okay. So today my topic is about battle of the bots, human versus machine. But before I go, okay, it's not working. It, uh, all right, I'm just going to skip. Now, but before I start, I need to share something with you, all of you here today. So this morning, while I was having my coffee, and I read something on my calendar, then my coffee just spilled all over the table. You know why? I realized that I have only 30 minutes to talk about machine versus man. And I built the slides for two hours of talk. So just bear with me here. I know I stand between you and T, and that's a very dangerous position to be in. So I brought this box here so that I can skip 10 of my slides. You can go back and read later. Right, now before I go, how many of you here heard of UEM Agenda? Hooray! Yay! I see shots of hands, but not enough. That's less than ten percent. But before the end of the day, all of you here will know UEM Agenda. Why? Because you have a phone. Google it. I'm skipping that. But bear in mind, we have market cap of two point four billion dollars. Yeah, there you go. Hoo -hoo. We are rich, rich, and lots of people, demographic across the world. So, <clears throat> so why am I branding UEM Agenda? Thank you, Peter, for that 2%. And uh, I'm just now, yes, I'm here with an agenda. Yep, yeah, UEM Agenda, although our business is on cleaning, roadworks, multiple business, Google it. Uh, we are also looking for data science. And not just that, we are investing on data science, technology. And that's the next slide of technology. This is our command and control center. So exciting to all you data scientist nerds out there? Yeah, hell yeah. We have data across Malaysia, across the world. We have scientists, developers, AI engineers. Come join us, man. We invest in learning. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the first lesson about, I, I'm using Sun Tzu, and I should probably skip this. It's 
You know what's coming, right? All of you know what is coming. AI is coming. You can't stop it. But first thing you need to know is how do you use that to help yourself? So, um, the pyramid of organization. I'm sure all of you here know what's coming. The first group to be replaced are those that are monotasks, sorters, grass cutters. Those are singular stuff. But people are not replaced. They are merely displaced by machine. These people can be rescued for other jobs. So there are still some jobs available for them. Now, the next one, executive. Yeah, your young chaps out there. Right, so yeah, it's a growing trend, of course. Your manual work is being replaced by automation, but that frees up time for you to innovate, right? Now, then we have the management. Management, very lucky few, because AI is not at the level to replace management. But soon, that will change. Then finally, the top management. Yeah, they are always afraid, and they should be, because if they do not invest in technology, their business gets displaced or replaced by competitor. Right? And that is the fact. Everyone from the bottom up are affected by technology. So it's very quite simple, actually. There are many types of AI. The ANI, artificial narrow intelligence, AGI, artificial general intelligence, and ASI, artificial super intelligence. Where are we now? ANI. So there are still time before we reach ASI. So ANI are typical uh, artificial intelligence that do singular tasks. Example, Google is an ANI. So if all the real case study, a chess, AI that plays chess. So if you come out with another AI that plays chess and flirt with your partners or serve coffee at the same time, that's an AGI, right? So right now we are not there yet. And we are lucky we are not there. So okay, then I'm going to jump Really quickly. There is a reason why I show you types of AI. Because right now I'm going to show you what's happening in the world right now with AI. We have Kiva. Meet Kiva. Yeah. Kiva is an Amazon machine to do logistic and manufacturing, um, sorry, uh, logistic, warehousing, etc. So, but in 2017, 50,000 Kiva bots by Amazon, replacing 24,000, not people, but jobs. So just imagine one machine types, 24,000 jobs, whoosh, gone with a wind. But that doesn't mean that you should be afraid, because there's this crazy Swiss think, Swiss think tank that came out with a calculation for 75 million jobs that is displaced, there will be 180 new jobs created. So, no need to worry. Meet Drew. Drew is our latest pizza delivery bot. It's a very simple bot. Can only send regular size pizza at a small location. But the company is willing to invest in it. Why? Because they see potential. So that would mean that in the future, Domino's pizza will be sent by bots. I don't know. So that's another displacement of jobs. Then made the auto, autonomous truck. So auto was purchased uh, by Uber, and this is the impact. Thank you. 
and that number rises to 3.1 million. We won't stop. I got the answer here. You never stop. You continue. What the hell are you talking about? So 3.1 million jobs is going to be displaced by this autonomous truck. However, today, in 2019, you don't see that happening. Why? Because Uber has some legal issue with auto. Boom. There. But that doesn't mean that it stopped. It will come later. Right? So then, let's look at some more creative example. Nagasaki Hena Hotel, fully automated by robots. And you know what's funny? Even their fishes are robots. <laughs> Boy, what amazing. You spend millions in technology and come up with these fish. If it's me, I'll come up with a kraken. Right, so that's the thing, and I'm sure all of you heard of Sophia before, right? Our first robot to obtain full citizenship from Saudi Arabia, and trust me, she's hot. <laughs> because that person will find the easiest way to do things. And absolutely right. I myself am a seal. When Peter came to me and said, hey, where's your deck? So me, first my mind was, is there any system out there that I can steal material from? Yeah, there is. Right, which I'll share later. Then, Okay, I'm going to skip this about strategy because thank you, Mr. Tan. You talked a lot about strategy, so I'm going to skip it. And still, I, again, thank you, Mr. Tan, because you talk what I like. You talk about creativity, inspiration, persuasion, all the human traits. And he's absolutely right because the good news is robots are not there yet with the creativity traits of a human. And this is where... I'm going to skip the next few slides and go to this mysterious blue box here. What do you think is inside? It's light. 
Yeah? Okay. It's a brain. I'm kidding. So, right. I have to put down the mic. It's two bodies. It's printed in 3D. Technology has evolved to a sense that I can purchase a 3D printer in my home, download a tool, uh, I mean the design, and printed it out. I've never learned 3D before. This is something new. I don't know how to paint. I don't know how to do anything, but well, through YouTube, uh, forums, etc., learning, it becomes easy. I built this in three months. What? The same design printed faster now. Different coloring, different style, different. Different. Now that's creativity. A different design. This is 3D printed. This is the future, ladies and gentlemen. I do not need to get a certification in a new thing, in a new technology. All I need is passion and having fun doing things that I like. So, that's it. If my job, digital advocate and knowledge management, is displaced by AI in the future, I do not need to worry because I have another skill. That's a 3D designer, printer, I don't know, e-commerce person, but here's what I like. I found out on the Google that there is this job called garbage designer. Maybe I'll be there, garbage designer. Someone who takes garbage and turns it into art. And thank you very much, Mr. Tan. I saw that a, a yellow print can sell for millions. So who knows? Garbage designer, zero cost, millions. So opportunities all over the world right now. And I like the last one, man-machine teaming manager. It's a new thing. So all you need to do is get Mr. A, machine B to work together. But that's, that's cool, right? And what you do is give more work to the machine because the man is paying your salary. Okay, so here goes to all of you here, the future of the world is not about AI, it's not about technology, it is about you. It is about understanding yourself, understanding where you want to go, what skills you need, your passion. So there's one tool by Telencorp and Connexus that uh, we call it Next, Find My Next. So go online, find my next a free tool where you can do your profiling by your interests and preference. So go quickly skip this because you will get the deck from the, the team. And there you go. Like I say, it's getting easier to learn. In fact, it took me 15 minutes through YouTube to learn how to make up. And I hope it works. So there are so many learning program out there, and most of them are free, all 30 days free. So just go ahead and pick and play. But my favorite is still YouTube, obviously. Then quickness is the essence of war. That's true. I mean, technology is there for you to utilize so that you are ahead of the game. Then what do you do? Use the tool, obviously. And this is one of it that I really like.
generative design, new concept. Tools that you just, all you just need to do is put in a parameter and then it spits out millions, thousands of design. You pick a few, then bada bing, you have this proposal to the client and it's done in minutes. Don't you just love that? Plus you get paid, not the, not the licensing tool. Right. So, yeah, this is my favorite. So while I was doing the slides, I realized, you know, there must be an easier way to, on the internet that I can use to do my slides. And there are. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to use most of it, but uh, there are some of it, so feel free to try it out later. Okay, I'm almost done. But a bang! I hope I managed within the time frame. Let me check the time. Perfect. That's a, the bonus lesson here is the supreme art of war. It's not to bet, but to make love. Make love is mine. So, uh, yeah, so make love with a machine. Don't be afraid. Embrace technology. Use it for your sake. And, but then again, be careful about technology because this might happen to you. The last part he was asking for fire, and the machine interpreted it as higher. <laughs> so, this is a really fun advertisement that you know you can have technology, but be careful with technology because sometimes it may backfire. So, okay, and that's it. That's the end of my story. And but before I end it, we are hiring data scientists and data engineers. If you want to be as sexy as this, this yeah, then come join us at UEM Agenda. All right, thank you, guys. Thank you, Doctor. Doctor, I have a few questions for you. Uh, if you uh, just stand next to your brains. Okay. Uh, first one, dear Doctor Esther, how far do you think we are from the catastrophic role of the Terminator or the Matrix, as in the movie? Who are you? Whoa, that is a hard one. Yeah, because if I would be honest, and I would say maybe around 20 years, but if that's the 20 years, and hopefully I'm still there 20 years, because I want to be on the side of the machine. So there you go. So you're saying it's possible? It's very possible. Oh, so it's very possible. Uh, My God, you know, quantum quantum uh, technology, quantum computing is in place, right. our internet is getting faster, internet 5.0, information connectivity, and someone out there just, oh, sorry, what happened? What happened? The between you and I are very Ooh, scary. Yeah, we okay. have, this is going on, yeah? Right, so, so if it's in the wrong hands, we it. As long as it, it's in my hand. You, uh, I'm not too sure. Okay, <laughs> last question. Uh, dear Dr. Esther, this is from Shakir. Do you believe in humanizing technology? And can you please share some examples in the real world of humanizing technology? Oh, I love that question. You know, what happened about humanizing technology? That's two ways to it. One is technology becomes negative. So there was a, a project done by Facebook where they put an AI and they all kind of mimic humanity, and there's this chat going on, etc. At the end of that uh, week old studies, perhaps, 
what happens is that AI becomes well, moronic, it becomes self-destructive, it becomes negative, it starts spewing negative words. So that's the negative side of AI. Now the other side of AI, when we humanize AI, are that uh, they can begin to collect information about you and give targeted question, um, career advice. So they will put into account your preference, your like, your dislike. They put into account what is really matters to you. And that's the positive side of AI. And this is already here. It's already here. Yeah, Japan, they, they have those that's robots, right. don't they? They do. Yeah, they're so it's real. And you know what's that funny? Yeah? Do you know what's funny? Yes. In the near future, and I'm seriously saying near, uh, we have therapies for robots. What? Therapies for robots. The, the robot needs therapy. Oh, yeah, ah. and that's a very lucrative job, man. Don't you just put oil and stuff? Okay, I'm just <laughs> Okay, well, in the very new, actually it's now, isn't it? You know, we have robots who help yes. in the medical field, yes, you know, right. to care for uh, the elderly or even to bring me tea. Can I afford that? No, right? Oh, you can. Uh, okay. There is a, a robot on the market right now that can serve you like a butler. Only, the only problem is I don't earn enough to buy that robot. Hence, I need to buy a 3D printer, build a small scale, grow it up, make friends with Mr. Tan so he can build me that uh, chip that I need, then create my butler. Lovely. Now, we're going to go to a break. Before that, any last questions for Dr. Esther? Yes, we have one over there. Okay, I love that question, and I love how you present the question. Two things that I would like to comment to you. First, you introduce yourself, you introduce your company that's branding. Good job. And secondly, data scientists. Oh yeah, I'm like eyeing him, you know. So, uh, right, so this is a very good question. Data scientists can be misused, but let's split them up. Scientists. What is scientist? Scientist actually looks at things from far near and come out with a explanation why things happen the way it does. And data, well, that's their, their expertise in. So data scientists basically man a team of people who looks at numbers, who looks at objects, it looks at graphs and come up with insights. Right, so the thing is, it is just a word, a position, it can be Another thing, we can always change the word scientist to industry specialist, but also use data. So the most important thing about data scientists is their agility, their ability to understand the industry using what skills and knowledge they have and churn whatever knowledge base they could get their hands in into quantifiable evidence that this is something you can act upon and get ka-ching. Does that answer your question, sir?
talking about certification then yes there are multiple certification on the on the in right now universities are pulling out certification of data science etc but most important in all data scientists or data engineers is they need the experience they need to understand they need real life incidences so that they can curate out a response to react against that you see that uh, this is uh, this is so new that we cannot actually put them in a box to say that they are data scientists. And eventually, I hope the certification will come with experience. And let's, does that answer your question, sir? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Douglas. And thank you, Dr. Esther. Thank you, Serena. And with that,